Bibles to Hebrews 11. We're going to look at verse 32. We're wrapping up all of the men. We still have another one to go over on Wednesday. And then we're going to briefly go over some more before y'all spring rest, even though y'all kind of get a spring rest this week, right? Yeah. For three weeks. So hilarious, guys. Hebrews 11.32. Look what it says. It says this. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David. David is our next dude in Samuel and the prophets. David is our next guy that made it to Hebrews 11. This is like the faith hall of fame. These are people that were in the Old Testament, but they made it to the New Testament because they walked by faith. They did something, right? So we've been learning about all these people and what they did by faith because we're supposed to follow people who are walking by faith. See, the world has it twisted. The world says follow people who have a lot of followers. Follow people who have a lot of status. Follow people who have a lot of money. But guess what? You follow those people that will get you nowhere. Yeah. Do you understand that? Following people who are not living their life for God will get you nowhere. Do you understand? Yeah. Following people. It doesn't matter how many people actually they say follow them or how many people have viewed their videos me making my life look like theirs it will get me nowhere first of all because you're an original yeah. and if you try to live like somebody else then you'll never live the call and the plan that God has for you and I want to train myself to follow people who walk by faith what is walking by faith believing speaking and doing the word that's who I want to follow. If somebody doesn't believe the word and speak the word and do the word, then I don't want to be a follower of them. Well, I like the way they do makeup, or I like the way they dance, or, or I like the way they play basketball, or I like, I'm not a follower of people because of their talent. I want to be a follower of people because of their willingness to believe, speak, and do the word. Well, that's not very popular. Of course it's not popular, but get over it. Do you know what I mean? Being popular, that will last you all of maybe a couple years. The moment you graduate from high school, guess what? Nobody cares. Right. Nobody cares that you're popular. Nobody cares that you were cute. Yeah. Nobody cares that your parents had money. Nobody cares. Do you understand? But do you know what will leave a mark on them? If you were someone that stood up for the truth. If you were someone that whenever they were sick, you were willing to pray for them. That's what's going to leave a lasting impression. Because here's the thing, y'all. Kobe Bryant can never step on a court again. Do you understand? And all of his fans, listen, guess what? They have nobody to watch, right? Now, if he shared Jesus with someone, guess what? They have that forever, regardless of whether or not he's here or gone. But he didn't even share Jesus with his own self. Do you understand? Once you die and you don't live by faith, everything that you establish, it dies then too. But a believer that lives by faith, it goes on throughout eternity. I go to heaven. You go to heaven. People are going to come up to you and say, hey, thanks for praying with me on the playground. Hey, thanks for standing up for the truth. I know I never said anything to you in fifth grade, but it meant something to me. And so I found out about God, and I found out that there is a Savior, and I got saved. So thank you for standing up for the truth. But see, if I just like focus on how cute I am, focus on my dancing ability, focus on my makeup, focus on my clothes, focus on my talent, and I don't determine to live and walk by faith, listen, y'all, that's all I have to offer. And there's going to be someone that's more talented, bottom line. Do you know there's someone more talented than Kobe right now? You know why? Because Kobe's gone. <laughs> so someone more talented is here on earth playing basketball. Do you understand that? Well, they're not playing right now because they canceled the NBA season, but they will be playing soon. Do you understand? I have to, I have to change the way I think about things. Y'all, the way the world says you can be popular and then you can be famous and you can have all this money, it's a lie. The only way to have true success is by following the word of God. And that's what we're going to learn about in David. David was a young guy whenever he first started having a relationship with God. What do I need to know about David? David had a relationship with God. We know that David killed Goliath, right? Whenever he was watching his father's sheep, he killed a lion and he killed a bear with his bare hands. Do y'all understand this? Like he was a kid. His dad even said he's the littlest of all of the brothers. Okay, he didn't even invite him to the dinner whenever they were going to have the, the prophet over. 
He did not even invite him. He was little. He killed a lion with his bare hands. Can y'all think about that for just a minute? One little kid killed a humongous lion, killed a humongous bear with his hands. Where did that come from? It wasn't from his muscles. It was from God. He had a relationship with God. He knew who was on his side. Do you understand? And because he knew who was on his side, then he was able to do these great things. But how did he find out that God was on his side? He had a relationship with him. What does it look like to have a relationship with somebody? You talk to them or a friendship. You talk to them, right? You know what they like, what they don't like. Has anyone ever found out what their friends don't like? You know, whenever you come to school and and your friend brings a certain lunch, if y'all still do that, or maybe even it's a certain lunch day and, and you know that your friend doesn't like the, the pizza or the green beans or the applesauce or whatever y'all get, the carrots, but they know that you do. So whenever they sit down, they know you like this certain thing. So what are they going to do? They're going to give it to you, right? And you're going to give them your roll or you're going to give them what y'all even eat at school. I don't even know. I don't even want to know. But I'm just saying, I remember I had a friend that would bring a big bag. This was when you could bring, like, snacks to recess. She had a big bag of, like, Cheetos. And she would bring them every day. And so guess who was, like, right there next to her every day? Me. Because I like Cheetos. Do you think she stopped bringing Cheetos because I like them? No, she kept doing it, right? Whenever you're in a, a relationship, whenever you have a friendship, right, you find out what the other person likes and dislikes. You spend time with them. You get to know them. See, here's what a lot of church people think. Church, a lot of church people, a lot of believers think, well, if I go to church, that means I have a relationship with God. But that's not having a relationship with God. Do you understand? Coming to church does not mean you have a relationship with God. I've known and know a lot of people that come to church and the fruit of their life does not say they have a relationship with God. Do you understand? Outside of those doors, they have a relationship with something else and that is called self. They have a relationship with their own selves. So coming to church doesn't mean you have a relationship with God. It doesn't mean that. Coming to church and even serving, that doesn't mean you have a relationship with God. Having a relationship with God looks like this is what I do day in, day out, this day, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, whether I'm at school, whether I'm in my room by myself. A relationship is seen in every area of your life, not just at church. How sad would it be if a husband and a wife, their relationship was only seen whenever they were at the dinner table? They only treated each other like husband and wife when they sat down for dinner. And then every other time in their life, they acted like they weren't married. Do you think that marriage would, would last long? No, the relationship would be over, right? Because all the other times in the day, what are they doing? They're focusing on themselves. See, a relationship is not just at the dinner table. A relationship is not just at church. It's all the time. So what do I know about David? The only way he was able to do what he did was because he had a relationship with God. And he had to have that relationship by faith. Why do you think David had to have a relationship with God by faith? Why didn't it come natural to him or to us to have a relationship with God? Why does it require faith to have a relationship with God? Who can tell me? Right, but why does it require faith to have a relationship with God? Because you can't see God. You can't see God, right? Why else, Jacob? Say it louder. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? I can't even, like, that's what God likes is faith, right? So I can't have a relationship with him if I'm not walking by faith. That's good. I can't see God. Without faith, I can't please God. There'll be no relationship, right? If I'm always making someone mad, are we in a good relationship? No, right? So that's a really good one. Anybody else? Why does it require faith to have a relationship with God? Hannah, were you going to say something? Oh, Kara? No? It requires faith to have a relationship with God because I can't see him. Yes, baby. Do you have another one? Yeah, it takes faith to be nice to other people. Anybody ever dealt with someone that wasn't very nice? Hello. It requires faith to have a relationship with God. I cannot see him, right? I've never seen him. And so it's going to require faith for me to say, God, your word is true. And me having a relationship with you is more important than anything else. Let your neighbor and say, than anything else. 
So what do I know about David? He had a relationship with God. And because he had a relationship with God, he was able to kill a bear. He was able to kill a lion. He was able to kill a giant. Whenever he messed up, he was able to be forgiven. Whenever he was in his house, he was able to have visions of the house that God was going to build for, that his son was going to build for him, himself, for God. He had visions. He could see into the future. Why? Because he was cool? No, because he had a relationship with God, right? Why are we able to do great things? Because we have a relationship with God. Here's the other side of the question. Why am I not doing anything great for God? Is it God's fault? Why not? Because I don't have a what? I don't have a relationship with God. I may have a relationship with church. Ooh, I come to church. Ooh, I'm good. I may have a relationship with my, with my Bible reading. I fill out my devotion. Ooh, I'm real good with that. I may have a relationship with my serving. Ooh, I'm really good at serving. But I don't have a relationship with God. I don't spend time with Jesus. Y'all, if I, don't, if I don't spend time with Jesus, then all of this, guess what it is? It's just a show. You know, just like actors and actresses, are they actually those characters? No, they're just putting on a role, right? They're just performing. People who, who are on stages singing, that's not who they are all the time. Do you understand? What are they doing? They're performing. You know, just like Matt said, it took us like however many hours to practice those dances. Well, don't you know that like there was one girl that she does um, make up something on TikTok. I don't have TikTok. I don't condone it. Please know that. Um, but she was doing makeup. She said, I spend six hours preparing for that 30 second video. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> spend six hours preparing for a 30 second video. See, she wants, she wants to be good at the 30 seconds and so she invests the time to be good. Why is it so easy for people in the world for fake followers to spend so much time cultivating and doing their thing for 30 seconds. And you and I, we won't spend time with Jesus long enough so that whenever we get to school and someone's hurting, we have the confidence to pray for them. Why not? Wow. Isn't praying for someone to be healed so much better than being able to show a 15 second video of yourself dancing or your makeup or your whatever? Is it not? Yeah. Is it praying for someone to be healed and then immediately being healed better? Yes. So much better. Yeah. Do you understand? But what is it going to require? It's going to require me to have a relationship with God. Not a relationship with church. Yes, you're going to come to church. Not a relationship with serving. Yes, you're going to serve. Not a relationship with just filling in my devotion. Yes, you're going to read the word. You're going to do those things and hold yourself accountable. But I want to have a relationship with God. And so I've got to chisel out time. I've got to, by faith, say, this is more important than something else. This is more important than that video game. This is more important than that TV show. I can pause the TV show and come back to it, y'all. We don't even have any excuses. Back in the day, they couldn't pause it. Do you understand? They couldn't pause it. If you missed the show, you missed it. Unless you had a VHS. Y'all, those VHSs went hard. Me and Pastor Charity would, on the regular, be recording shows on VHS. Do you understand? Gospel Bill recorded. We would record it and watch it over and over, and then you had to wait till it rewound. Do y'all have to do that anymore? No, it would like spin, and then sometimes if you rewound it too far, the tape would come out, and then the tape was ruined. <laughs> it was the worst thing in the world. And then I remember Pastor Dean got a hold of one of our videos. It was actually Polly. We had it recorded on VHS. He recorded a game over it. So it was like partly Polly and then partly a game. We don't even have to deal with that now. We can literally pause it. We can DVR it and say, God, it's more important right now that I spend time in your word than me watching this show right now. I can watch that show later if you even want me to. But I want to have a relationship with you, God. I want to have a relationship with you. You know that it's just like if you, if you are at a cafe and you see you, you're sitting at your table and you're with your family. Well, then you see this one person and they're just, they're just sitting there at the table and they have, they have one menu in front of them and then there's another menu on this side and you keep looking over there and as your family's eating and they're laughing, they're just still sitting there and the waitress comes and asks, you know, are you ready to order? And they just say, no, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for them. So then 15 minutes pass. Hey, are you ready to order? No, I'm waiting for them. Hey, 15 minutes, another pass. The waitress comes and is like, hey, you know, we're closing in like 30 minutes and no, I'm going to wait for them. And then closing time comes and that man's still sitting there and they never came. This is you and I whenever we miss out on opportunities to spend time with the father because he's waiting. 
He's ready. He has something to give us. But if I skip out, if I think the game's more important or the activity's more important or watching the show's more important, then what happens? He's left sitting there with exactly what I need. See, I have to have a relationship with God and I have to do it by faith because I can't see him. Do you understand? So what do I know? David had a relationship with God. So what do I do? I have a relationship with God. David had a relationship with God. So what do I do? Look what it says in 1 Samuel. I just want to show it to you on the screen. It's 1 Samuel. Verse 16, chapter 16, verse 18. Then one of the servants answered and said, Look, I've seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite. He's talking about David, who's skillful in playing. He's a mighty man of valor. Look how this man saw him. Y'all, his dad was like, he's little, he's scrawny, he's no good. But this guy saw him different because he wasn't looking at all this natural stuff. He knew who he was with, who is skillful in playing a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person. And the Lord is with him. Look at that last part. Let's read that together. Ready? One, two, three. And the Lord is with him. And the Lord is with him. See, whenever that servant looked at David... He noticed something different about him. Y'all, your relationship with God, ladies, please let me tell you this. Your relationship with God will make you far beautiful, far more beautiful than any amount of makeup. Your relationship with God will make you far more valuable, guys, than any amount of money. Do you understand that? Your relationship with God will make you far more valuable than any amount of talent. Your relationship with God will make you far more successful than anything that the world says will make you successful. Whenever, she, whenever the servant looked at David, he said, the Lord is with him. Well, how did the Lord get with him? He had a relationship with him. Every day, what did he do? He showed up to the table. Said, God, I want to talk to you. I want to know exactly what your word has to say for me today. I want to pray in the Holy Spirit. I want to pray in my understanding. And then the Lord is with him. Have y'all ever seen or have y'all ever been that kid that like latches on to the parent's leg? Have y'all ever seen that whenever the kids are getting dropped off and they're like latched on? They're like, I don't want to go. Have y'all ever seen a little kid do that before? Anybody ever seen? Like they're like, I'm not going. I don't want to go. And they're like almost hiding behind him. So they're like, mm -hmm, like all like scary, trying to, trying to avoid getting dropped off or whatever, maybe kindergarten, school, whatever, holding on to the leg. I want to be that way with my Father God. I want to be latched on, right? I want people, when they see me, they see who I'm with, and I'm with Him. Because, see, if I don't have a relationship with God, then I'm just stuck with me. Yeah. And, y'all, I have nothing to offer the world. Do you understand? There's going to be someone more talented. There's definitely going to be someone that's a better dancer. There's going to be someone prettier. There's going to be someone that can speak better. Without Him, I'm nothing. Without Him, I'm nothing. I have nothing to give the world without Him. But with Him... I have an opportunity to give people the truth, and that truth will set them free. So what can I expect? Look what it says in Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That what? Why do I need to have a relationship with God? So that I can prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Whenever I have a relationship with God, I walk in the perfect will of God. And y'all, in the will of God, there's protection. In the will of God, there's peace. Y'all, there's a lot of people right now that are panicking over something that is weaker than the flu. It makes no sense in their minds. It's weaker than the flu. Do you hear me? It's not as aggressive as the flu. And people are panicking. People are freaking out. Why? They don't have a relationship with God. See, because I have a relationship with God, viruses can't touch me. Disease can't touch me. Because I, not because I come to church. Please know that. Coming to church and having a relationship with God, two totally different things. I can tell you time and time again of kids, when they graduate high school, they think they're going to be good because they've been coming to church their whole lives. And they're not good. They don't know what to do. They can't hear his voice. Why? Because in moments where they should have been spending time at the table, they thought, well, I come to church, so I'm good. No, that does not make you good. A relationship with God makes you good in your soul. Jesus' blood makes you right. But good in your soul, man, that's a relationship with God. So things can't touch me. I'm protected. It's like, have y'all seen those big bubble things where like people either like run or they like throw down a hill like they're in the bubble? Like, and it's massive and it's protecting them. Like, you can do things that you couldn't normally do. Or even like, what's awesome is whenever they have those big things and they like run and hit somebody else. 
and knock them down. But it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt as bad as like actually getting knocked in the face, right? It's not as bad. It protects them. See, my relationship with God, it protects me. And so that's why I want to make sure that in my relationship with God, as I hear his voice, as I show up to the table, because he's there. As I show up to the table, I'm getting direction. I'm praying in the Holy Spirit. I'm doing what I know to do so I can live the perfect plan that God has for me. Look to your neighbor and say, you have a plan for you. Look to the other neighbor and tell them, and no one else can do it. But listen, you'll miss out if you don't have a relationship with God. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes.